Few people realize that the Hollywood Library predates the Hollywood sign and the movie industry in Los Angeles. The Hollywood Public Library was an independent library that was started by the Hollywood Women's Club in 1906. Its first location was in two rented rooms on Coanga near Hollywood Boulevard. Shortly thereafter, Andrew Carnegie pledged $10,000 for a library building, and Hollywood co-founder Diana Wilcox Beveridge donated the land. In 1907, the library opened its Carnegie-funded English Tudor building on the corner of Hollywood and Ivar. It was a handsome building and was featured on postcards advertising Hollywood. It was popular immediately, and the number of cardholders doubled in the first six months. A larger library took the Carnegie Library building's place on Hollywood at Ivar in 1923. This beautiful new library featured Spanish colonial architecture, and it continued to thrive until it was outgrown too. That building was disassembled and moved through the streets down to 1623 Ivar, where it was reassembled as an even larger library. Few people realize the role the Hollywood Library played in the community. It was beloved. Authors, actors, screenwriters, and musicians used the library for research, and they also participated in library programs, including exhibits, art shows, lectures, open-air readings, and civic gatherings. The library itself was a character in books and films, most famously Raymond Chandler's The Big Sleep. The Hollywood branch was the second largest library in the Los Angeles public library system behind Central. The library had amassed collections pertaining to the growth of Hollywood in the movie industry. These included working scripts from silent era films, autographed biographies of film stars. These were one of a kind collections. At 2 a.m. on the morning of April 13, 1982, at least 14 fire companies arrived to find the Hollywood Library fully engulfed. It took them an hour and 15 minutes to put out the fire. The library building, 75% of its book collection, and all of its theater arts collection were destroyed. The cause was arson. Vandals broke windows to enter the library, graffitied the walls, tossed empty beer cans, and piled books up behind the circulation desk before lighting them on fire. After fire destroyed the Hollywood Library on April 13, 1982, there was an immediate outpouring of support from the community, both from citizens, businesses, clubs, and organizations in Hollywood, and from the motion picture and television industry. Among the first to respond, Johnny Carson donated $10,000. The Screen Actors Guild sent notices to its members soliciting funds and memorabilia. A group of senior citizens volunteered to stamp and mail out appeals. Hollywood Heritage gave walking tours through historic Hollywood, and Club Lingerie held Save the Library fundraisers. And Orson Welles voiced this dramatic public service announcement. Sometimes we take a gift for granted until we lose it. In the Hollywood Library Holocaust, 70,000 books were reduced to ashes. A window to our world was blackened. But more than fire is gutting Los Angeles City libraries. Smaller budgets mean shorter library hours, fewer books, and cuts in staff and service. He can't afford it, neither can we. That's why the Los Angeles Library Association needs your membership and contribution now. By supporting the Los Angeles Library Association, you help support our libraries. You help give the gift of books. You help give the knowledge that preserves our heritage. Give the gift. Give the library. Perhaps the biggest loss from the Hollywood fire was the destruction of the Performing Arts Collection. This special collection held rare and irreplaceable items, such as notebooks of D.W. Griffith and Charlie Chaplin, silent era movie scripts, and a vast collection of theater programs and playbills. Supporters of the library felt that there needed to be a collection that represented Hollywood's role in motion pictures and TV, as well as represented the community's history. And they felt strongly that this should be in a public library. People responded in a big way. The widow of William Wyler donated his collection of 200 books about the motion pictures. Hitchcock's family donated 100 years of the British humor magazine Punch. 
Award-winning television director Rod Warren donated his unpublished scripts and papers, as did countless other writers and directors. Highlights of the special collections include leather-bound scripts of silent era movie director Herbert Brennan with telegrams from studio heads inserted in between the pages, sketches from famed costume designer Adrian, movie posters, lobby cards, the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce donated its Hollywood Christmas Parade archive. In 1983, when the original model for the library was unveiled, Goldwyn said that he and Gary were criticized for its design. People said that it didn't look like what a library was supposed to look like, he said. Have four rather solid walls, be dark, and have Shakespeare and Plato on the walls. That's good too, but this is different. I hope people will come and look at it and want to come in and read a book. The Frank Gehry designed Hollywood Library opened on June 12, 1986, more than four years after the fire. Kirk Douglas cut the ribbon while teary-eyed Hollywood staff members looked on. Staff members from Central Library were also on hand because just two months earlier, the Central Library had also burned. In fact, lessons learned in the aftermath of the Hollywood Library fire about salvaging books and handling donations would prove to be invaluable in shaping the response to the Central Library fire. The grants well of support demonstrated how much the Hollywood community loved and valued its library. This amazing collection is still accessible to the public by making an appointment at the Hollywood Library.